hello welcome to my channel so today i'm going to start a physics chapter force and laws of motion from class 9 that is the book references of the NCRT book okay so now we are going as to study about force and laws of motion we have to know what is force actually okay if you give take an example of just pushing a, an object or you're pushing a very, very heavy box okay you're ordered to help your mother so you're you're just applying a force on it and sometimes we have to pull something okay you have to you have tied the rope with an object and you have to pull it okay so that is also an applying a force so if we have to define it about pushing and pulling of the object so that is only the force isn't it so definition how we can write it that it is defined as a push or pull of an object or on an object with mass that causes it to change its velocity because mass will be there object with there it will be mass will be there and there will be a change in the velocity okay how much acceleration will be there okay from initial to final uh, point how much uh, well velocity is there so now let's see here f is equal to ma f is denoted for the force m is mass and a is acceleration and we have already got that acceleration is what final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time v minus u by t okay so that is the m into a is what the force it is the derivation of the force and its si unit will be what mass we know it is kg and acceleration we know meter per second square so kg meter per second square is equal to newton and so therefore the for, um, force si unit will be newton okay so while talking about the, about the force there are two types of the force one is balance force and another is a unbalanced force so let's study first the balance force what is the balance force actually okay if the resultant of the applied force is equal to zero then it is called balance for force okay let's say the equal to zero what is equal to zero how the applied force can be equal to zero okay and the question has come to your mind that how that the applying we are, we are applying the force but that is equal to zero how okay let's see the diagram the green box is there now just assume it it is a box of green box one side from the left side 25 newton force is applied and on the from the right side this side also 25 newton means like you and your friend is you are applying one force he is saying no we have to put the box to the left side and you said no i have to put the box to the right side so what happened both of you have started fighting and both are pushing what will happen both have the same force both are applying the same force then what will be the resultant force we will we have to minus it okay we have to see the resultant force what is actually the force so 25 minus 25 equal to 0 newton because there, there is it is applying forces equal to 0 and that is known as a balance means both side the application of the force is same okay next we'll talk about the what unbalanced force so unbalanced force is what when the applying force is greater than the zero okay then it is called the unbalanced force okay let's see what is unbalanced force again here same thing your friend has applied 25 newton and that day you have at your breakfast very heavily you have more energy and what you have done you have given your full force from your body okay then it will be 150 you have given your whole force as 150 newton so automatically what will happen your friend has to go back to the left hand side isn't it this box you are in the right side your friend is in the um, left side then what will happen then you have to go back then your friend have to go back to the left side means or one means your force is more okay if your force is more you are stronger than him then what will happen 150 minus 125 you do the whatever the force applied is there you will get 125 newton means this is the resultant force and this is known as unbalanced because both the force are not same clear okay now we'll talk about the newton's laws of motion okay all the newton's laws of motion 
this newton has studied it was given by the galileo okay so galileo was what at least he was an he had interest in mathematics also he was a natural philosopher okay so galileo was a very uh, he has discovered many things okay uh, has uh, he has said about the planets also okay then how it should orbit around the sun these all things and what happened galileo has given these laws how the motions so what newton has done he took out from that idea he took out the main three laws he, he had taken out the main three laws were what first law of motion second law of motion third law of motion is given the three names there and now we'll get to study one by one what are the laws of motion let's see first one first law of motion what he said here now okay we have to read the laws very properly okay we have to remember this one by one okay first law of motion what is then any object at rest okay whatever the object was in rest any object at rest remains in the state of rest and any object in motion will continue in motion along a straight line with uniform speed and uniform speed we have already got in the previous chapter this was discussed already so uniform speed we have already got it so uniform means there, there will be no changes in the speed in one speed means okay until it is compelled by an external force to change its state now see one example of this ball volleyball what has happened here this ball before it was in the ground and the player has kicked it when it was in the ground what it was there it was at rest but as soon as the player will hit it what will happen it will go to the another player okay it will go to the another player means then it is in motion means before it was in the rest okay then we had we had applied an external force and then it had gone into motion and when it was in the motion again if someone catches it that one will be in the rest means external forces again will change its state state means what rest state and motion state okay now this car racing car or any other car you can take here i have shown one just racing car what this racing car will do now when it was in the when there was no uh, driver there it was just still in the ground so it will it was at rest as soon as it is used okay as soon as it is on so what will happen it will go it will travel so as it will travel what will happen if some obstacles or any other thing is there we, what we have to how will we can change the state we have to stop the car like we have to stop the car what we will do immediately we will apply one external force okay we'll apply one external immediate force and that force means we will apply the brake and it will change its state means it will state change from motion to rest so this is the law of the motion the first law of motion is what you can say object at rest remains at rest object in motion continue in motion along a straight line with uniform speed but until until what it is compelled by any external force to change its state this is the first law of motion next we'll talk about the what inertia inertia is what now while talking about the first law of motion we have to know what is inertia also okay like an example i will want to say you you're traveling in a bus okay when you was traveling in a bus what will happen suddenly the bus stopped okay you was moving in the bus and suddenly your bus stopped what will happen your body will go away from the seat in the forward position and as you was just sitting idle at rest in the bus and just the bus started to go you was in a inertia rest your body was at inertia rest and as it will just started your bus has started to go then what will happen your body will move little bit forward okay it will be forward and again back that is the inertia of rest or then change the state inertia of motion so inertia is what it is a tendency of object due to which it resists any change in its state of rest or uniform motion so inertia of an object is measured by its mass and is directly proportional to mass if always remember if inertia is more 
means the mass of the object should be more and if inertia is less mass of the object should be less now let's see one example next slide what is this example this example is of a uh, two object one is just a ball you can think or a stone of 2 kg okay you can think of a stone of 2 kg so then here uh, this stone of 2 kg will be what and one size one cube of 1000 kg is there so what will happen this 2 kg stone can you move can we just carry and move to another place obviously we can just carry and move to the if you have to move that stone from one place to another place or a ball from one place to another or any other object of circular or any square or rectangular or cuboid or cube shape you have to move from one place to another place of 2 kg easily we can do but 1000 kg can we just move from one place to another place no if you have to apply force also force must be more means inertia must be more because mass is more here and in 2 kg inertia is, will be less because mass is less here okay so for that reason inertia uh, the first law of the motion sorry first law of the motion is also known as a law of inertia newton's first law means an object is at state of rest and state of motion it should not change its state without external force and inertia is what there is a tendency of an object in which it should change its state by its own okay tendency of that object that should not change its state by its own so any external force we have to apply now let's see some uh, two experiments one experiment is of what uh, one experiment of we have we'll talk about the um, carom coin and another will talk about the card okay we'll talk about the card here so the carom coin at the bottom of the pile is removed when fast very fast moving carom coin hits it okay it will move but when a card is flicked with the finger and the coin plays over it falls in a tumbler in ncrd book in 117 um, and 118 these two experiments are already given okay so carom coin what will happen at the bottom of that okay as it will be stacked it will be piled uh, using one to another what will happen as a striker will the strike the coin um, the uh, carom coin then as it will hit very strongly on the bottom coin the lowest coin will be removed and the inertia of other coins will make them fall vertically on the table because you're hitting the you are applying force on the lowermost uh, carom coin then only the bottom pile will go others is at rest so that one will, will be in the rest and when a card okay afflict with the finger that one you can try at home also you will flick the uh, that one the card not the coin coin will be there in the above but you are applying the force in what in the card then what will have the card will get removed because the inertia of the coin will try to maintain its state of rest and so the coin will be left there and what will happen the card will be flown from that place okay so that is the example of the first law of motion so students next uh, we will talk about the momentum and slowly we will go to the second law of motion but not on the next video not in this okay this video will be continued on the part two of this chapter so thank you and have a good day